Uh, Mike <laughs> thinks he has figured out why our rope uh, emulator doesn't work. Okay, so uh, phase four of T10 is when the rope cycle starts, or I guess it's already started, but this is when the set AD or set CD pulses start. Mm -hmm. So that's when it switches on the set current. Mm -hmm. But that's at the end of a memory cycle. But when you, uh, sorry, yeah, yeah, this is towards the end of a memory cycle because the, the memory cycle goes from T1 to T12. Uh, and then it is supposed to stop the set uh, current at uh, phase three of time one, which is the, the beginning of the, me the next memory cycle. Okay. However, if you're using the debugger to breakpoint or stop execution of the computer, it always stops you in between memory cycle times. Ugh. And so you start your set current at time 10, and then you stop it at T12, and it, you keep getting T12s. You never make it the, to the time pulse 1 to switch off the set current, which is not good because then you just have your set current continuously running. Mm -hmm. And so they have this extra input here, uh, TIMR, timer, timer, uh, that can reset the, the flip-flop for set AB and, and set CD to switch off the set current. And, and, and Timmer is from? Uh, Timmer is from module 6 here. It's this circuit. So as long as the computer is stopped, uh, phase 01 from the 10-step uh, the ring counter mm -hmm. can set this flip-flop. And then as long as this flip-flop is set and the computer is still stopped, then the confluence of phase 04 and phase 05 not can generate timber, which will reset the, uh, the set current. And since it's a five-stage... Uh, it's a five-stage ring counter here, whose uh, phasing is, is just completely random. So, so, with so this is different from the, the, the phase one, phase two, phase three, phase four? Uh, what are you saying, phase one, phase two, phase three? The, the, the ones that control everything. Uh, yes, yes. Those are based on uh, based on the, the clock input. Those are much faster than these guys. Oh, okay. This is divided down a couple times. So this, you're saying, is just running through the ring constantly. Right. So this and is wherever a... wherever you start, it determines how long the pulse is before it shuts off. Right. This is a 10-stage ring counter okay. whose phasing, whose frequency is different from, and, and phasing is random with respect to the 12-stage time pulse so. counter. So um, why do they have this counter? I think they needed to divide by 10. Uh, for to generate like the 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 hundred and two point four clock to uh, one hundred two point four kilohertz clock to external things. I'm not entirely sure, but okay. the, yeah, they needed to divide by ten for whatever reason. And then That's they use this does. for the the override re, um, reset for just random reasons, or uh, so. It's, it, it, it makes sense, right? Because when you have the computer stopped, you're locked in your 12-stage time pulse counter, and you just get time pulse 12 over and so, over and so over and over So you can't use again. that one. So you can't use this to time it. So, so the slowest thing you have... So you can what either, other random clock convenient. do yeah. we have? Yeah. So so you what's can, on the shelf? I'll use that. You can either use this, or you could use your scaler here. Uh, it, it's kind of surprising that they didn't just use one of the scaler pulses, because that's how they would normally do that. So I'm not sure why they used the ring counter for the timer to reset the set current, but that's what they did. But it's a nice explanation that... Yes, and so the reason why the pulses are in the wrong order is that we're seeing, we have already, at some T10 that happened a couple minutes ago now, we did the set pulse, and then when I allow execution, it's going to finish that rope cycle that it started and then forever the next ago. One. Yeah. Okay, so... So, yeah, no matter how far I, like, zoomed out, I was always seeing that order. Right, right, because I was stepping on human time scales. <laughs> Even though you're superhuman. And that's why, that's why if we do um, cycles like this, we see the, the pulses in the right order, because there's, there's multiple memory cycles going on. Because the, the read cycle takes two MCTs to execute, so we're seeing it bridge through 
a real T12 without the computer stopping and then finishing that one cycle and moving on. So what does this mean for, for me? What does it mean? <laughs> <laughs> what does it all mean? <laughs> what does it mean? What does it mean? What does it mean? Should I A, change my code to handle this weird out of order case or is there a way to do the testing without doing this weird thing? Uh, it would... It would be nice if you could handle this. It's not out of order, it's just a very stretched apart in time. <laughs> Hello guys, we were just uh, doing some debug of the uh, rope modules and it's another feat of uh, Mike's engineering I wanted to show to you. So he was running simulation and he saw some little glitches in the, yeah, there go, in, in the rope signals right there in the simulation. And we were wondering if there, those were artifacts or if they were real. So since we have the real hardware, Mike is going to try to capture what happens in the real machine. Down there. All right, so let me set up the test. Zero, restart, reset channel, and go. Okay. And sure enough, in the real machine, These are the exact same glitches, right? Yeah. Yeah, right here. See them here. See them there. See them there. And then I'll pan out for his simulation. And you can see the exact same one. You can point to them, Mike. Yep. There. One, there. Two, and three. there. I, I think that <laughs> that's remarkable <laughs> that you, you have gotten to that level of, of precision that you reproduce every little things including even bugs that you found in the thing mm -hmm. yeah. all right well we'll see if we can use that to good effect and get ken's rope modules working what do you think ken We're almost so there I've, I've added a, uh, a oscilloscope trigger to my board so if it hits the bad address it can trigger the scope and we can catch exactly what happens at that point without having to hook up you know, a dozen logic analyzer wires. Yeah, they, they are totally resisting me putting the logic analyzer, which is probably a good thing. All right, get the bug.